Hey, what's up you guys? Today we're gonna be working on the Toyota pickup and we received the shocks for it. So in the last video, I told you guys that we needed uh, 28 inches extended and 11 inches compressed minimum. So this is what we found closest to those numbers. Monroe MA812. So these are 20 inches extended, but collapsed well compressed they are 12 and 3 fourths so we're losing about an inch and 3 fourths than what we than where we should be but that's fine i don't think we're gonna carry anything super heavy in that little truck either way so this is what comes with it and we ordered these on rock auto and they were they were like 70 bucks shipped to the house so they're not that bad um so they come like this. They have these little caps with the little pin, I guess, to keep the dust out of them. And then you need somewhere flat with the blade, because when you cut these lines, you can't cut them with like a with like the wire cutters. You have to cut them with the blade, and you have to like press down on it so it can give it a nice clean cut and not bend the plastic tube. So let's install the shocks first, and then we'll route the these lines. So let's go over to the truck which we have on jack stands already we're going to start over at the passenger side and these are size 14s okay now we're going to see if these fit in here which i think they should okay before you install the shock we actually have to find a place to put the valve so you can know what we're going to route your lines. We were actually thinking by the gas tank uh, filler hose. So it could be kind of tucked away. Or we were thinking right here, right above, or oh, right below the license plate, maybe like right here. And let me see where we could put the, the air valve. And then I'll put you guys back on. So we're deciding to put the valve right here or somewhere back here I don't know exactly where uh, so these shocks could be facing back well this part this part right here could be facing back so let me slide these in real quick like that and then extending it is a little bit of problem so there you have it now we're going to route the line Somewhere up here, there should be enough space. And then we're able to get it back here somewhere. This would look cool, but I think it's, too, I don't know, it's too exposed. Maybe up here from the side or something. I don't know, we'll figure that out in a bit. So we're gonna put these, um, we're gonna put these bolts back right here. All right, so we're gonna get back to this. Uh, let me install the driver's side and then. Okay, so we're going to drill this hole right here and put the valve here. I don't think it's gonna interfere with that tool because we are gonna put the Y back here, up here somewhere. I don't know if you can see my finger. But right here, back here. So there's gonna be a line from here to there and then that's gonna split to the shocks. Let me go ahead and drill this and drill the back piece over there. And then I'll show you what we're working with. Okay, so I can't find my small drill bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it here and zip tight for now. I'm going to go around the one of these little edges right here where the bed goes and put some zip ties to hold it right here in place. But basically it's going to go like this. And then a line from here to this to split off to the shock. So I'm going to remove this little cap. Pull this off. And so there's an O-ring right there make sure that doesn't fall off we're gonna so the way i'm gonna route the line is we're gonna go here then off to this side over this and then kind of just drop down from here and i guess zip tied to this harness right here so when the spare tire goes up it's not gonna interfere with this because this is where the spare tire ends up i guess just maybe not even close to this 
but uh, it should be safe up here, you know? So that's why we're using this spot. So let me route this line, and all you gotta do is just push it all the way in, and then, oh, make sure you put the cap in first. So put the cap in first, push it all the way in. Oh, shit, oh, my bad. I actually have to put the O-ring on the, on the hose first. Slide the O-ring in this. this slide the thing in the hose in and then slide the cap in and just twist it all the way in by hand Put it all the way through. Oh shit, make sure you don't kink it like that. Ah oh, fuck, hopefully it doesn't damage it. But... Alright, let me do it with two hands and then um, I'll kind of cut it and put it right here. Okay, so. Got some zip ties on here and some oh one zip tie back here. So now we're gonna route this through here and we're gonna cut it at this dot right here, which should be sort of the middle from these two points right here. So I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna insert. Hold on, let me see if I could try to do it on camera. comes with some extra o-rings for the for the cuts and then um we're gonna insert in the other plastic well the y so let me do this end cap and then i'll show you what it's gonna look like okay so i had to finish doing it off camera just to get um to get it done before it gets more dark so this is the valve right here that goes to the y and this is temporary so when i get the smaller drill bit or something i can fit back here I'll drill the hole and then this is going to be behind this piece right here and then the line for the driver's side goes here i found a little hole on the frame that fits these little clips that come in the kit then they go to the shock and then on this side it goes straight over this comes over here this is similar to the passenger side on the driver's side we still got it over the frame and all that and it's not super tight so there's a little bit of play of so, I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. So back here, you only, you only see this little piece. We're able to remove this and fill it up with air. So these have to be a minimum of 20 PSI and maximum of 150. So we're gonna do that tomorrow because we don't have an air compressor right now. So we have to fill it up tomorrow, but that's it. Those are the shocks installed. And we have similar ones on the Troll Blazer with the sound system in the back, and they do pretty good. We need to replace the springs on that, but the shocks are actually working good on the Troll Blazer, so I'm pretty sure it's going to work perfectly fine on this truck. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at Yonke underscore OXC Films. I'll leave that in the description down below, and we'll catch you in the next one.